Hi, this is Benjamin, founder of Farmagain. We have often spoken about productivity of uh, agricultural crops. Today, I have come with data for three different crops, uh, tomato, chili and uh, cucumber. Let's look at the productivity data of these three crops across different countries. Say for example, tomato, Netherlands apparently has a average yield per acre of 160 tons. By the way, uh, you can see this on the screen. Uh, this data will be made available to you. Um, and if you look at Israel, 91 tons per acre, Spain, 81 tons. And if you come down this list, we see India with an average productivity of about 15 tons. Again, I would like to reiterate, it is the average productivity. Some of you might be uh, certainly getting much more than this. Some of you far less than this, but this is an average number across the country. And if, uh, if you look at Chile, Netherlands again tops with 28.6 tons per acre, Spain 25.7, Israel 24.3 and if you come all the way down, we are at 9.8. The same rule holds good, some may be getting more than this, some may be getting less than this, but this is the, the average number across the, uh, across the country. Now let's look at cucumber, again Netherlands 200 to 230 tons per acre, Spain around 60 to 75 tons per acre. Now why is so much difference between these two countries because if you look at the other two crops the difference was very close but uh, here there is a huge difference between these two countries. The primary reason is that Netherlands grows most of their crops in greenhouses while Spain most of I mean of course you do have a lot of greenhouses in Spain but this data is from open farming and if you come down this list again to see the Indian uh, productivity it is about 10 to 14 tons per acre. Now, why is such a huge difference in productivity across countries? The reason is, a key, key reason is um, in all these countries, agriculture is a very clean business, just like any other business. So they have a standard operating procedure, a clean infrastructure done as per a plan, perfect plan, and everything that is done in the farm is done as if something is being done in a factory. But back in India, a lot of us have inherited agriculture from maybe our ancestors. So we follow certain practices that we had learned uh, from our uh, uh, parents. Uh, the knowledge of these uh, today's hybrid seeds and the way to grow these hybrid seeds and the knowledge about the uh, genetic capacity of the plants we grow. Yes, a certain population of India has these knowledge and uh, another percentage of Indian population actually does not have access to this kind of information. So how do we bridge this gap? Is there a way I can also aim to get this kind of productivity like the top countries, Netherlands, Spain and uh, Israel? Yes, we do have a method of doing this and that method is called precision agriculture, right? So in precision agriculture, uh, what we do, of course, I've spoken at length in uh, different videos. So I'm not going to get into the fine details of precision agriculture, but by and large, first of all, we have to have the right infrastructure to deliver uniform irrigation at every point in the farm. That's the first fundamental point. That's a key. That's a holy grail. Once you have the infrastructure in place, second, any plant on a raised bed performs better. We have spoken about this also in the past because the raised bed gives enough aeration uh, to the root zone, which helps the plants um, uptake the nutrition better, the micro uh, microorganisms in the root zone thrive better, right? And different types of mulch. Generally, we go with uh, plastic mulch or weed mat. Um, in some cases, people do go with natural mulch, but some form of mulch as appropriate for that crop in that region. And once you have taken care of all of these, the infrastructure for irrigation uh, is ready. And then comes the genetic capacity. So depending on the crop, depending on the variety, depending on the manufacturer of the seed, there may be different genetic capacity for them. And according to the genetic capacity, you will have to really derive a formula uh, of nutrition management that is right for the plant and for that soil. And once you have that program defined, which is uh, expected to optimize the productivity of that crop towards the genetic capacity of that crop, then comes the actual application. How do I apply? 
you can apply manually, you can apply the traditional uh, methods to both do both irrigation and the uh, nutrition management. Um, and uh, of course, beyond nutrition and irrigation management, there are a few other things like the climate management. In a polyhose, you'll have to worry about temperature management, uh, humidity management, and uh, sometimes in indoor farming, also light management and CO2 management. So once we have all of these in place, how do we actually deliver them to the field? That is where technologies like Grotron play a huge role. As you know, Grotron is a technology that was built based on the evapotranspiration science. And we also have the distinction of being recognized as one of the top 100 innovators of India. And what our technology does is that it ensures the root zone of the crops is maintained with the right balance between air and moisture because that is key for the plants to uptake the nutrition optimally, even if you do the right calculation. But if you don't apply it right, the plants are unlikely to take them up and use them during the photosynthesis process and get uh, benefit out of what you supply, right? So their growth on helps in maintaining the right air, air water balance. Second, nutrition management. You can apply nutrition in, uh, like in the traditional methods, say for vegetables once in a few weeks, and for plantation, maybe once in three months, once in four months. Yes, you can do, but the plants are unlikely to uptake all these nutrition optimally. So where does Grotron help? It helps in administering very minute dosages of these uh, fertilizers, very minute dosages, but in more frequent application. What that does is it helps the plants to take them up little by little, slowly, and uh, use these minerals during the photosynthesis process to get closer to the genetic capacity of these plants. And not just that, while you may do uh, nutrition management and the irrigation management, one other parameter is that uh, the pH of the soil may or may not be right for the plant you're growing. So what Grotron can do is, and more, most a uh, lot of Grotron farmers do use this feature, where they keep a separate tank for acid. Usually people go with phosphoric acid and that supplements uh, phosphorus uh, mineral, uh, instead of using phosphorus chemical, they use uh, phosphoric acid, uh, which is in more available form. Also, it is allowed in organic farming. And uh, we do that, uh, one, as a nutrition supplement for the plant uh, for phosphorus. Two, uh, to make sure the, uh, the root zone pH level comes down to, say, 6, 6.5, which is the most ideal pH level for most of the plants. Uh, for optimal nutrition uptake. So if you are able to do all of these uh, systematically with the help of Grotron, yes, we can inch towards the genetic capacity. We can inch towards the records shown by these countries like Netherlands and Spain. Now, you may also ask a question. What if I am not able to invest for Grotron? Um, can I not get this yield? Of course you can. Even if you are not able to invest in a technology like Grotron, you have to very diligently, carefully, manually administer each of these irrigation, nutrition management, climate management, and all of that. If you are able to even administer manually, you will still be able to get, if not to the level what Grotron can help, at least to some extent, you will still be able to get to the genetic capacity of the plants. Until we meet again in another video, signing off, Benjamin. Happy plants, happy planet, happy farmer. Thank you.